one. Getting closer. Okay. Okay, everybody out of the line of fire. On a warm and beautiful day, April 2, 2023, I joined a WCA day paddle on the upper Saugeen while it was in full flood. There were five tandem canoes in the group, and most of us had paddled together before. After we shuttled the cars and set up our boats, we had a little group meeting and listened carefully to the advice of the trip leader who was familiar with this river. We all agreed to stay close together. There are many benefits to traveling with a group when recreating in risky conditions, as this day will attest. And we'll tuck in. All right, here we go. You want to go? You want to spin? Okay. That's good. Thanks. I'm surprised Neil didn't come out again. The river was winding full of flood-related obstacles, and the current was really fast, what some paddlers describe as pushy. Right. <laughs> That's a good turn, Yuri. Right into the point. That's beautiful. Might as well go to the right shoot. There we go. Oh, good, we survived that one. That was a pushy corner. A decision taken a split second too late resulted uh -oh. in my partner and I sideswiping the root ball with a down tree and capsizing. My partner and I were wearing helmets and dry suits, so we were well prepared for this rough dunking in freezing water. In the water, I oriented myself as soon as I could to be floating on my back, feet first with my head up. My fingers found the whistle tight okay, near my mouth boat. and I blew it repeatedly until I was safely hey, ashore. This served to alert the whole group that someone was boat in trouble shore. and help them track me as I zoomed by, here? caught in the current. I guess my so. partner boat was tracked shore, closely by the videographer's shore. canoe swim, who helped swim, make sure swim. she got out okay. Grab the back of our boat. Here, here. That was a cracker. Okay, here you go. Uh, you'll have to walk up the shore and I will try paddling up a bit. Mm -hmm. Try to get back up the shore there. All I if I took to dry on my gloves yesterday. <laughs> on the stove, that's right. I remember that. Now the timing of this accident was lucky. Several paddlers had already oh, eddied out, waiting for us to pass, and the rest eddied out on one it. side or the yeah. other of the river, so we were all pretty much in the same place. It was also a beautiful day and still morning, so we were all in good spirits and full of energy. I don't know, I'm thinking. The two boats that eddied out on the far side of the river stayed there, ready to help with their pulleys and rope until it was clear the boat rescue was not going to happen from that on side. This shore. Let's just park it here, I think. You just get out? Yeah, we'll go off and walk. Okay. I'm, well, I'm thinking either the end of the log or this root ball, you can put a strap. End of the log. End of the log would be the safest then. Can I just jump in and try and make a... So, let's plan this out a bit. I got it as well, but... Nobody yeah, you what you could do... I need a throw bag. You need a loop. I got a, I got a webbing. You got a webbing, okay. I need a throw bag. Throw bag, you can have that to throw us back at us. Yeah. And then we'll feed you the big line. Right? Do you want the person staying out there then? Well, once they've tied on, why don't they float down? They, they might float down with the. And we can even pick them up. So here's the here's the sequence. What are they doing? Oh my God! What are they doing? Okay. Want to grab their boat, guys? Okay, they'll come back up. Anyways. Okay, so here's the sequence. Um, you would do a flat dive out, get into that kind of semi-eddy, 
it's still a flow. So when it was really pretty apparent from the start um, the canoe was a wreck. I had heard it crack upon impact, and it was trapped in the complicated mess of roots. Um, While some group members figured out exactly where we were on the map and to look for options to extricate people in boats, for example, where was the nearest road, the rest of us studied the wreck. We knew we could come back after the spring flood had abated, but there was considerable risk of it not being where we left it, so we were pretty keen to at least find a way to secure it. Nobody likes to leave plastic garbage in the watershed, especially at place that size. You gotta get a rip across. I, I blew that one. In a place that I can Yeah, we don't wanna lose anything. The lines of the wrecked canoe were tangled and pinned, so our first effort was to get someone back to the canoe to tie a new line to it. Preferably anchored to a piece of webbing wrapped around the hull and fastened to either end of the closest thwart. The swiftness of the current was intimidating, and we could see okay. the tree was unstable. So, so after some discussion, and the stationing of a safety person with a throw bag in case I couldn't get to shore easily again, I walked upstream a hundred yards, with webbing tied around my waist and a throw bag affixed to me and within easy reach. I was careful to make sure there were no loose ends that could entangle me. I found a place to wade into the water and launched myself into the main current, feet first again of course. I successfully steered and planted my feet on the canoe, but the current pushed me off it with such force I had no hope to hold on, even if I had managed to find a secure hold on in the second I slid by. I had been expecting to be able to swing myself into the eddy created by the canoe's stern, but I was firmly shoved away from it, but then into shore, so it was a short walk back. So our tree has moved a bit. We're going to attempt to get a rope around the root ball and pull it over this way. Plan B is get a rope on the end of the tree and pivot it. She's going. She's rotating, which is good. It's starting to rotate. It definitely rotated closer. There's more eddy. <laughs> yeah. You can't get to walk over at this point. Yeah, there's more rotation going this way, so. But I'd really like to grab the end of the tree. <laughs> but it's the root ball is heading this way now. Yeah. You can see it's a lot more eddy available. Well, hopefully it rotates enough and gets over here. And it's moving. It's on the edge. Getting then, closer. a stroke of luck. <laughs> the canoe and the tree started to move. Suddenly, something came loose and the whole mass floated downstream 50 feet or so, now. ending up much closer to shore, running aground in the shallows. Let's get it before it goes somewhere. Here, grab. Before it could take off again, the videographer affixed okay, a line to himself, me. threw the other end at me, and asked to be belayed from an anchor upstream so he couldn't be swept no, away no, while affixing there, a line yeah. to the stern. I quickly stepped around a tree and locked it against my waist, but he gained good footing in the eddy immediately and was able to stand and managed to tie off the stern.
We made a mistake here. We should have had at least three persons at the shore. When the tie-off rope was handed over, two of us were now holding important ropes. We needed a third standing ready to help the man in the water, who, rather predictably, lost his footing getting to shore. We could also have deployed a canoe on the water ready to chase him if he was swept away. This moment of confusion is a side effect of fast action without due consideration. those ropes secured. Okay, let's get the key pin kit, please. Somebody... Yes. Tie her off. The log might go, or just tie her off. Okay. And the boat will stay. Here he... You might have to straddle the log. That's it. It's definitely rocking. <laughs> Okay, let go of the rope a bit, let him have some slack. Can you do that little branch? We probably don't need the boat anymore. <laughs> but. Yeah, you guys have to be out of the zone, it's too many boats here. Pull it right up if you can get out of the way. Yeah, because you're in the kind of crash zone right now. They all are. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? That's all right. Beaner coming over. You want to grab the end of this rope so we have it? And then we'll get Yuri in the boat. Okay. Okay, now it's your turn to come back in the boat. Yep. Okay, now let him back through here. Slack off and we're gonna pull him up. Okay, I got him. If you want me to if you can untie. Get the boat right out of the way. I wanna get it right out of the way, yeah. Just give me a second here. Sorry. Okay, now you can come out. We'll get it right out of the way. Probably. Can we yank this out of the way? Can I have some horsepower? Right. Whew. Okay, now. Let's get some more webbing and stuff. What do we have? Well, I got It was good that most boats had a deep three. pin kit with them because mine was Hang underwater on. with my throw bag. I just had the carabiners that were clipped on my life jacket. The deep pin kit consists of about four to five meters of two inch webbing, two or three pulleys, and a couple of climbing carabiners. This, together with 75 foot of three eight inch rope found in a good quality throw bag, and a couple of short pieces of rope or webbing to be used as prussics, can help pull a swamped or pin canoe off a rock. Now pulleys are expensive, so most of us only had two in our kits. I was grateful to be with such a well-prepared group because pooling our kits, we could put four pulleys and several ropes into play, affording us much more force. You can set the Z-drag up for a one, two, three, and even six or nine to one if you need uh, extreme force. Now that we had a line to the canoe, we set up our pulleys, lined up our manpower well away from harm, shut the line under tension snap, and pulled, and pulled, and pulled.
think. Go. I think it's doing something. <laughs> we can reset. You're going to have to reset, yeah. Okay. I think it moved a bit. I think it did. Okay, Leonard. Uh, Leonard, you locked. We went, oh, we went up there and then we walked down. Come back. Yeah, we used the GPS and found out there's only yeah. a road right there. Sorry? There's a road right there. We walked all the way up and then figured out the... Okay. Yeah. Move the Prusik. Yeah, yeah, keep slacking off, slack off. Slack off. Move the Prusik back. That's, that's all you get. Oh, that's not much. Did it move at all? I think it didn't move. <laughs> I felt it move. No, I don't know. It did, because that red thing. I guess I'll go on the end here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Second guessing. <laughs> Here, let me get on the other side of this. What a spring. <laughs> Okay, we might have to reset. Move it all. Hope so. Well, we could try just pulling on the boat I, with all this horsepower. I think it would be good to move the loop down here. Well, there is a long branch down there. Is that part of that tree? Absolutely. We could do that too. A bigger the lever arm. There's a lot, way more leverage. There. Yeah. Are we can't like planning on canoeing at all? Or? I think we're going to cancel. Why? Guys, I don't think Well, it's 20 some clicks. Yeah, it is. Gary? There's a road about 300 meters straight yeah. that way. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Okay. So there, there's, there's that, and also about two kilometers downriver, we go under, underneath a, a road bridge. Yeah. So either one of those are options. Yeah, it's a Good long way early. to the, the dam. It's the issue. And there's a lot of stuff up so, ahead, I'm sure. Do you want to do anything more, Gary? Well... I say you Z-drag up on the front of that boat. Yeah, that's the other option, there's I guess. A, there is a bit of a... Like a branch in the tree above. Yeah, yeah. Vertically. vertically? Yeah. We could put a Y branch to get a vertical component, like we did on the Fatawawa. But we could also try the end of the branch, put the strap instead of where you have it over here. Be a bigger lever arm. I, I think that would make a big difference. It might break off the end, but. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. We we'll try that too. We have one more pulley on. Okay. Take four. <laughs> Pulling now? We're pulling again. Oh, we were just doing that. Did you see that bus at all? Oh, the back was a knot is. Wherever. <laughs> Get more out of our pulley for cleaning. Yeah, we're safe here. If this breaks, it's only a little stretch. <laughs> Look at the canoe, or Look It's at not the moving canoe. too much. <laughs> Watch it, you're, you're in the zone of deadly, deadly. We tried a new angle of rope. We tried to move the tree with a sling around its downstream end. We tried to roll the tree towards us with a sling around the root bowl. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. This, this boat is deeper now. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, it's coming up on itself. 
It definitely rolled over. It definitely going. rotated. I can put more people on. Might help. So. I even sat on the trunk and tried to dislodge the boat by pushing with my legs. The canoe was well stuck to the tree, and the tree was well we aground. Sure All we managed to do was stretch the line. Finally, I ventured out one last time and retrieved what I could from the boat. the canoe up. Okay, let's try reefing on this. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Famous last attempt. This the last attempt. Head off that way. Okay. Okay, everybody out of the line of fire. It, boys, call it a day. No luck. Yeah, well, we kept the canoe out of the water. <laughs> now, can you see the bag here? It doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> I would say let's wrap her up, get over to the uh, takeout. Yeah, the thing with the bag is the clip is usually where 
Like the bag is floating like this, and the yeah. clip is like being jammed underneath something, and I couldn't get my fingers. I couldn't yeah. hold it. And you couldn't even cut the clip. The, the it's, at this point, come back in a week or two, you'll Here's be fine. The chances of it like floating away, like I, having hit the one hand cut and grab. Like, yeah, so just leave that okay, rope there, and that on. should be good. Um, and, uh, Do you need somebody to go out there with you? Uh, I'd love to get my bag out. My bag's in the stern somewhere. Okay, mm -hmm. throw your wrapper up. Call it a day. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's Here's, take it I'm gonna take the The Where Are We team had located us to be but a short distance away from a riverside property. They secured permission for us to take out there and arrange for a canoe shuttle. Oh Christ, this is a skating ring. <laughs> the following weekend, the water level was even higher. So I stayed home and prayed the rope would hold and the deck plate it was attached to. The weekend after that, the water had dropped by at least half, and I secured access permission from the landowner to go down to the river's edge. I arrived with a block and tackle and come along big enough for a small ship, and hauled it all out to the river's edge. I was relieved to see the boat exactly where we had left it. It had rotated, and was impaled on a large root, so it had to be unwrapped from the far side of the river. I was able to wade over, and set up the pulleys and winch from an ideally placed tree a little upriver. The bow unpeeled from the root ball and the whole boat began to float a bit. After pulling it towards me and emptying it, I was able to wade with it downriver to the access, strap it to my roof rack, and haul it to my local waste management site. Their car scale thought my boat only weighed 35 pounds, so I was charged $11 to leave it there. I did salvage some fittings first. My canoe was an old warhorse. It didn't have much value, but it did have a lot of memories attached. I was sad to see it go. Cool.